everyone and welcome to Maple Leaf ESL. My name is Andrew and thank you for joining me here in the classroom today. For today's phrasal verbs lesson, I want to see if we can take a look at expressions that begin with the word fill. So for this lesson, there's actually only three different phrasal verbs. However, there are many definitions for each. Okay. Also, I included one bonus idiom at the end that we will take a look at. Okay. Let's see if we can start with fill in. We have four different definitions for this one. Okay. The first one I wrote here to write in information in a blank space. Okay. This is a really common phrasal verb. Imagine if I have an application form or a registration form or a survey or a questionnaire. Okay. Well, in this case, I need to put my name and I need to write my birthday or my address or something like this. So in this case, I have to fill in my name. I have to fill in my address and I have to fill in my birthday. So I have to fill in each blank space, right? So that one's pretty simple. It just means to write the information in a blank space. But remember, there has to be a space there. If it's a blank piece of paper, then you're not filling information in. It has to ask, it says name, and then you fill in your name, birthday, and then you fill in your birthday. Okay. Second definition says to provide information to someone. Okay. Think about this situation. Imagine I take a vacation for two weeks. Okay. And I have a job, right? So I take a vacation for two weeks. After two weeks, I come back to my job. Of course, I have missed everything that's happened for these two weeks. And I want to know what did I miss? What happened? So I might ask a coworker, could you fill me in on what happened in these past two weeks? Right? Please fill me in, right? Please tell me what happened. Tell me what I missed. Okay. And that person might reply. Yes, of course I will fill you in or let me fill you in. So again, let me tell you what happened or let me tell you what you missed. Okay. Think about a police officer is at a crime scene. Okay. And then another police officer arrives. So of course the new police officer who is arriving needs to be filled in right on what happened at the crime scene. Okay. All right. Our third definition says to substitute for someone. Okay. Think about a sports game. Okay. Let's imagine a football game and one player gets injured. Okay. And they have to come out of the game. They cannot continue playing. So of course they need a different player, right? A new player to take the place of the injured player. So in this case, the new player will fill in for the injured player. Okay. And notice you fill in for someone. We cannot split this one. Whereas here, please fill me in so we can split that one. Right? So in this case to fill in for someone, you cannot separate it. Okay. Same thing in my job, right? Again, and maybe I have to go to a meeting, but I'm sick. Okay. And somebody must go to this meeting. So I might ask a coworker, could you fill in for me at this meeting with our client? Okay. So we might use it like that. Okay. And one more definition for fill in. I wrote here to put material into something. For example, a hole. Okay. Imagine there's a hole in my wall or like a crack or something like that. And I want to fix this hole because I don't want this hole. So I might get some material like some putty or something and I'm going to fill in this hole so that it looks smooth and there's no hole anymore. So I might fill in the hole and then paint over top of it. Right? If I'm somebody who, you know, designs houses or is a construction worker, probably they have to do this a lot. They have to fill in a lot of the holes and then they have to paint over top of it. So any kind of hole that's there, you would fill it in with material again, like putty or maybe glue or something like that. And so that's filling in the hole. Okay. All right. Next phrasal verb says fill out. 
and we have two definitions for this one. The first one says to complete, for example, a document with the required information. Okay, let's see if we can compare fill out to fill in. Okay, so remember fill in is writing in each individual blank space, right? Remember I said you fill in your name, you fill in your birthday, and so on. Okay, fill out though, this means the whole document, okay? So if I go to the hospital, okay, and I'm sick, right? I need to see a doctor, then the receptionist might give me a registration form or some kind of admittance form and say, could you please fill out this document, okay? So she means, please complete every blank, okay? But maybe there's one blank I'm not sure about. So then I might ask, excuse me, do I need to fill in this blank or do I need to fill in this part, right? The receptionist might say, yes, please fill out everything. Please fill out the whole form. So again, fill out is for the whole form or the whole document or the whole survey, but fill in is for each individual space, right? Each individual blank. Okay, and a second definition for fill out, I wrote here to become larger or rounder in shape. Okay, this is kind of a polite way to say that somebody has gained weight, right? To say that somebody has gotten fat, okay? We often use it when we talk about younger people like children or teenagers, okay? Imagine I have a nephew, okay? And I haven't seen this nephew for a few years. Maybe the last time I saw him, he was 10 years old and now he's 14. So when I see him now, he's kind of gotten a little bigger. Maybe he was just a skinny, really slim, thin kid when he was 10, but now he has more muscle, he's kind of taller, maybe he's gained a little weight, so we can say he has filled out a little bit, right? But just be careful. You know, I said it's kind of a more polite way to say that somebody's gotten fat, and that's true. However, I think somebody might still find this offensive if they're not happy that they've gained weight. So I think you still have to be careful if you say it looks like you filled out, right? So just be careful with that one. Okay, and last one here says fill up. Again, we've got two definitions. The first one says to fill something completely. Okay, this is basically the same as the meaning fill, right? If I fill my glass with water, right, it's basically the same thing as saying fill up my glass with water. The only difference might be is that if we fill up my glass, it means I filled it to the maximum amount, right? I filled the glass kind of 100% completely. Whereas I could half fill my glass if I don't say fill up. But if we say fill up, it usually means completely, okay? The most common situation where we use fill up is probably at a gas station, okay? If I'm gonna ask the gas attendant to give me the maximum amount of gas, right? I want the tank to be full, the gas tank to be full, I would say, could you fill it up please, right? Could you fill my tank up please? Again, that means fill it to the maximum, right? The maximum amount, right? So again, I might say myself, I need to fill up my tank. So I need to fill my gas tank completely. Okay, and we have one more definition for fill up, which is pretty similar to the first one. It says to become filled, okay? Usually with this one, we talk about an object that has become filled. So imagine there's a river, okay? And it rains a lot, okay? And because it rained so much, the river has become filled up. So again, that means the river has reached sort of a maximum level and it might be sort of equal with the ground level. So if the lake or the river has filled up because of the rain, again, it means it's become filled completely. So we can see the meaning is pretty similar to the first meaning, we might just use it in a different way, right? 
Okay, and as I mentioned, I put in here one bonus idiom. I wrote here to fill someone's shoes and for a meaning to take over someone's duties and do so satisfactorily, okay? Okay, think about a manager in an office. Imagine this manager is really good at her job. Everybody likes her. She does a fantastic job at this job. Okay, but then she quits or she retires, okay? And a new manager comes and takes over for this old manager. Okay, now, if the new manager does a really good job and in fact does an equally good job to the old manager, we would say that the new manager has really filled the old manager's shoes, right? The new manager has, is doing an equally good job as the old manager, right? Think about if somebody is really good at their job, or again, it could be a sport, and somebody's really good at that sport, okay? And then that person retires, or quits, or goes somewhere to a different company, or a different team. We might say it's going to be very difficult to fill that person's shoes, right? Because they were so fantastic at their job or at their position that finding someone else to do an equally good job as them will be difficult. So again, it will be difficult to fill that person's shoes, okay? All right, I wanna see if we can erase the whiteboard here and let's take a look at some written examples using each of these phrasal verbs. All right, looking up at the first example here, I wrote, excuse me, do I need to fill in this section, right? So do I need to write in this part, right? Or in this section of the form. I wasn't here for yesterday's class. Could you fill me in on what I missed, right? So could you tell me what happened or could you tell me what I missed? Would you mind filling in for me at the conference tomorrow? So would you mind substituting for me or going to the conference in my place? Okay, and as I mentioned, filling in for. So we usually use that expression with the preposition for. Okay, next one, let's fill in that hole in the wall with some putty, okay? And I mentioned putty earlier. Putty is that, it's like soft and it's almost like bubble gum. You can kind of stretch it and put it into to holes to again, to fill in the hole, right? Okay, next one here, please fill out this form and bring it back to me when you're finished, okay? As I mentioned before, fill out is for the whole form, fill in is for the individual parts or individual blank spaces. Your son has really filled out since I saw him last. So again, he's kind of gotten rounder, he's kind of gotten bigger since I saw him last. I need to stop at the gas station to fill up with gas, right? So I need to put gas into the gas tank, right? Okay, next one here. Ever since it started raining last week, the rivers have really filled up. So the rivers have become full, right? They've kind of reached their maximum capacity. Okay, and last one. She was a great leader and it will be difficult to fill her shoes, right? So it will be difficult to find a satisfactory leader to take over for her position. Again, because she was so fantastic, it'll be hard to find someone who is equally as good as she was. Okay, that is the end of today's lesson. I hope all of these phrasal verbs and their definitions and examples were easy to understand. Thank you so much for joining me here at Maple Leaf ESL, and I look forward to seeing you again next time.